Welcome to another tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today is part four of my custom message box series where we're making a better, bigger, faster, six million dollar man version of the message box. And of course, this is part four. So if you haven't watched parts one through three, what are you doing here? Go watch those. Go get out of here. Go watch those and come back. Today we're going to work on our buttons. We're going to be able to change the captions of the buttons from OK Cancel to Yes, No, whatever you want to have on there. Pink and red, I don't care. And then we'll see how to handle the return values and have different responses and stuff based on those. All right, you ready? Here we go. All right, so now we've got a fairly functioning box here. Let's change the buttons. You don't always want OK Cancel, right? A lot of times you want Yes, No. Do you want to delete the entire database, yes or no? Do you want to, I don't know, self-destruct the ship, yes or no? So let's add to, let me, let's just close this. Let's add to our box so it can accept arguments for the captions on the buttons, right? All right, so let's open up our code editor. Let's go to our global module and let's find our function right down here, my message box. Now we're sending into it prompt and title. Let's send in two more things. So comma, new line. Let's try to keep the lines so they don't get too long so you guys can see them, right? All right, so now remember, once you start with an optional parameter, the rest of the parameters have to be optional. All right, so optional, button one. You can call it button one caption. You can call it whatever you want. As a string. And I'm gonna set the default for this is gonna be okay. So if I don't tell it anything else, button one is gonna be an okay button. I know it's different from how the default access message box works because they have those weird, you know, VB okay plus VB. Whatever. No, we're gonna do it differently. We're gonna actually set, we're gonna have three buttons total but when we're done. And we're gonna set what the captions and the values of those buttons are. Okay, all right, comma, and then optional button two as a string equals cancel. Those are the two we have right now. Okay, okay. Now we gotta add those when they come in, we gotta add those to our args parameter. All right, so after this line. Now, those are going to be specified as the defaults. It is technically possible for you with a developer, because remember your end users aren't gonna ever be doing this. It's technically possible for you to send in an empty string by sending in empty double quotes. You shouldn't do it, okay? But you could put a check down here for each one. Like you could say, you know, just copy this. All right, copy, paste, paste. And you can do the same thing for button one here, right? If button one is not blank, then args equals args and button one equals button one. Same thing for button two. If button two is not blank, then button two equals button two, just like that. Okay, so now we've added those to our open open args string. Now we go to our form and read the, those values in. Here's our form. Um, actually, one thing I wanna do on the form itself, let's go to the form and design view, this guy. All right, this is the okay button and the cancel button. But that's going to change because we're going to have, you know, this could be a yes button, no button, whatever. So let's rename these. I want to keep it simple to start. Well, you know how we, you keep it simple, then you, you add a little bit to it here and there. We're going to rename these to button one and button two. I know I usually end in BTN, but we're going to change it for this. So button one. And this guy is going to be button two. And you can leave those captions on here in design view. That's fine. It's not going to hurt anything. All right, back here. Wait, someone's beaming in. Hold on, wait for it. Wait for it. All right, now that we've already got this code built to parse out the string of the open args, adding new stuff to it is insanely simple. Watch this. I'm just gonna copy this one. Copy. We're gonna paste it down here. Boop. All right. If the name is button one, then we're going to set button one dot caption to whatever is a name value one, the, the value part. That's it. That's all you got to do to add new stuff in here, right? And then we'll take this. 
I told you, the last lesson was probably the hardest stuff we're going to do in this entire series. Now that we've got the infrastructure built, it's just adding gravy onto our turkey. And I'm, I keep thinking this because it's, I know you're watching this next week, but to me, for me, Thanksgiving's tomorrow. So I got turkey on the brain. All right, so now we're done. Now we can go back to our main menu code. All right, this is the code in the button that actually calls it right here. I got my message box, welcome cadets and Starfleet Academy. Let's change this around so it's a yes, no box. And my question is going to be, is Picard the best captain or the greatest captain? Now, we're going to we're going to rephrase this to just the greatest captain. And then we'll make our title over here. Um, ah, we'll leave a Starfleet Academy. I had something else different in the and the other thing, but we'll just we'll leave it as Starfleet Academy. All right, so it's, it's it's a Starfleet Academy entrance examination quiz. Okay, is Picard the greatest captain? Now I want to make this a yes no box, so we can now specify. Looks eh, see see we can now specify yes and no as the responses. See, all right, save it, debug compile, come back out meow. Let's close it. Hit our button. All right. Start the Academy. Is Picard the greatest captain? Yes. And why is it not working? Uh, let's figure it out. Let's see what happened. Hmm. Does anybody know what the problem is? Pause the video and see if you can figure out what the problem is. This is a great teaching moment. All right. Pause the video now. Go, go see if you can figure it out. I know what the problem is. Let's see if you know what it is. All right, so the buttons don't work. Let's close the form, right click. They got no other way to close it. See, this is one of those things you gotta be careful of because if this happens to your end user, they got no way of getting out of here except for just shutting access down. And you can't even shut access down, right? You're gonna have to kill the task. But we as developers, since we still have development mode, we can right click and go to design view, okay? Now, if you go back to your code window, everything looks okay. All right, everything looks fine. Let's do a debug compile. Everything compiles. What's the problem? Well, all right, let's start let's start drilling down into our code. Let's start taking a look at what happens when we click on these buttons again, right? Right click, build event. Uh oh, oh, there it is. There's our problem. See what it is? We rename the buttons. When you rename the buttons, the code gets mismatched. See that? Note to access development team. This would be an easy thing for you guys to fix, right? If a user changes the name of any object, if there's code under that object, right? An event or whatever, just change the code. It couldn't be that hard to do, right? You guys, you guys are awesome. You should be able to easily fix that. Somebody add this to the access team's to-do list, right? This, this has bothered me for years. Well, it gives me something else to teach in my classes, right? Okay, so... Button one used to be our OK button. So go find the OK button code right down here, right? All right. Take that. Delete this. Stick it up in here. OK. And we're no longer going to return just an OK. We're going to return the caption in the button. So button one dot caption. See that? And then we'll do the same thing for the cancel button. And the cancel button click stuff is right here. We're going to drop it down in here. Delete this code hulk that we don't need anymore. And do the same thing in here. Button two. Caption. Save it. Debug compile. Come back out. Yeah, close it. Click the button and eh. <laughs> there we go. There's our yes. And our no gets returned back to the calling subroutine or function or whatever. Right? And now we can do stuff with this. We go into our code. Let's go back to our main menu code. And instead of just saying the response is, we can have fun with it here, right? We can say if s equals yes, then, you know, uh, status, welcome aboard, right? Otherwise, status, show this man to the airlock. Right, end if. And now we can say, boop, right, welcome aboard, or no, 
show this man to the airlock. See that? There we go. Now we're starting to get to the point where we're returning values. Now, another option you can do if you don't want to return a string is you can have the message box return a long, return a number. I actually prefer this method better. All right, I've been showing you as a string, but what I like to do is I like to have it so this behaves like a, it returns a number, okay? So go back to the my message box function right here. And here we're going to change this from a string to a long. It's going to return a number now, which means the temp bar that we're setting has to be a number. Okay. And that gets set in the form. So instead of returning that, we're going to say button one is going to return. Now there's a lot of ways you can do it. Again, I give you options. You can return, you know, a one and a zero. You can return like, cause that way you can say if message box, whatever, then, okay. Um, that's definitely an option. Most of the time I only need two buttons. Yes and no. So you can return a one and a zero, but I'm going to make it so the buttons return their numeric value. So this is going to return a one. This is going to return two because guess what? In the next part, we're going to add a third button. So we can have yes, no, and cancel. We'll do that in the next part. All right. But for now we've got one and two. All right. Save that. And now back in our main menu. All right. This is no longer going to return a string, all right, so we're gonna change this to, uh, you, you don't even really need to declare this and put it into a variable, right? You could treat this just like I do in a lot of my classes, where I say like this, if my message box, da -da 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 -da, right, equals one, then just like that, right? If this comes back one, and you could set these up as constants if you like, you can make your own constants like VBS, VB no. Remember those things? But then you run into problems if you rely on it being, you know, VB okay, because that's got a different value than VBS and so on. So you, you can you stick with your own values here if you want. Okay. Uh, and these are still captions, so those are still strings. All right. Save it. Debug compile. Come in here. Again, this is, you could do it the way you want to do it. You want to use numbers. You want to use strings. You want to use, I don't know, emojis. Do whatever you want. <laughs> They're your Legos. Build it however you want to build it. Okay. There you go. There's some more functionality. Hey, uh, don't forget, if you like learning this kind of stuff with me, I got lots, 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 hundreds of hours of lessons on my website. So come check it out. I'll put a link down below. My Access Developer Lessons. If you're following along with this stuff, you belong in my developer class. You'll be an ace. You'll be a star. You'll be in there with the smart kids. But that's going to do it for part four, people. In part five, we're going to add that third button. Don't tell anyone. All right, that's going to be your tech help video for today. I hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed.
But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn Access and you haven't tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours. Go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four-hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward. <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, wanna get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks if you do decide to join as a paid member. There are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.